It's the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Our first hymn is Come Join the Dance of Trinity, and it's found in your bulletin. William to lead the candles. We have another choir out the back, just saying. And as always, we remember that it's our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land which we gather upon. We gather upon Treaty 4 territory, the original lands of the Cree, Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. And we begin on page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing number 365 in the hymn book.
Let us pray. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Holy Word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established in the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit. So that the waters might not transgress his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him like a master worker and I was daily his delight. Rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 8, found on page 711. Let us, um, let us pray the psalm alternatively by the full verse. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
our gradual hymn is As I Went Down to the River to Pray, um, and the words are all in your bulletin. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will speak not on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So here we are at Trinity Sunday again already. It's sometimes said that Trinity Sunday is the only feast in the church year devoted to a doctrine. While there is a doctrine devoted to the Trinity, the Trinity in itself is not doctrine, but a person, three persons in fact. Trinity is the name by which we identify the God that we worship. Trinity is the name of God that we know, insofar as we can know God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On this day, we turn from the sacred story to the sacred itself. For many, 
talk of the Trinity has become difficult, obscured, and even incoherent. The Trinity, according to Eugene Peterson, in Christ Plays in 10,000 Places, Eugene Peterson says the centerpiece of Christian theology and sometimes considered the most subtle and abstruse of all doctrines. Amen. I totally go along with that. It's subtle and abstruse part is what's, what is the problem. All that detail about homoousius and hypostasis and who proceeded from whom. Shortly, we will say the Nicene Creed, which defines the relationship within the Trinity in more detail than the Apostles' Creed. But I sometimes wonder how much the congregation reciting the words of the Nicene Creed truly understands what they are saying. And if you are one of those who does understand, good for you. The original Nicene Creed was first adopted at the First Council of Nicaea in Constantinople in 325 and has undergone some changes. Some heresies were attempted and yet it remains as the official statement of belief for Christians. It's caused uproars, it's caused church divisions, and usually about language. It's a great theological document and it's wonderful material for a study, but that's not what we're going to do this morning. But all in all, as much as the creeds try to describe the relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's still difficult to understand the way it actually works. I wonder if on Trinity Sunday many people, like me, feel like the sermon is answering a question that they aren't asking. What does the Trinity have to do with my daily life? And many preachers think to themselves, here's another occasion when my job is to try and convince people that an abstract concept of an abstract concept, which they never give much thought to, is foundational for your life. My friend, uh, the Reverend Bill Harrison, he's president of the Lutheran Theological Seminary now, although he was my um, Anglican theology of professor. And in his book, Frequently Asked Questions in Christian Theology, he says, the Trinity is sometimes treated as if it were simply an obscure add-on to Christianity, stuck in by theologians to complicate life. Most Christians accept belief in the Trinity because such belief is rooted in the teachings of Jesus and the church. The Bible does not speak about the Trinity. The word Trinity is not there. But the text contains a solid body of evidence for the unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as you heard in our gospel. However, even the most dedicated Christians tend to regard this as the church's most confusing doctrine, so they just ignore it. In fact, the assertion that God is Trinity is the most important thing that Christians have to say. Everything else flows from this." End quote. So how to explain the Trinity? Well, actually, I'm not going to. There have been and there are still some awful attempts to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. Some are good tries. There's the one with water, ice, and steam. There's one with a clover leaf, the three leaves, one clover. The one using a man who is a father, son, and a husband. Even one using a cherry pie, which is pretty awful. All these examples fail in that they physically divide the one. The Trinity is one and yet is three. But the thing that remains constant is that there is one action and that action is love. It's interesting how this morning's lessons draw us into the Trinity, the mystery of God. During the rest of the year, most of our biblical readings are narratives. They tell us a story, whether as history or as parable. On Trinity Sunday, we encounter not a collection of stories, but a set of visions. And there's a couple things to say for this day's readings. There are some things that are mystery, and they will remain mystery until the day we meet God in heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm compiling a list. Secondly, understanding the way that something exists or is put together is not as important as what it actually means for us and what it has to do with our lives. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier. Who do we look to in certain times or places or occasions? For example, 
when I'm walking on the beach out on a kayak, watching the waves, contemplating the mountains and checking out the tiny fingers and toes of a newborn baby like Theo and Grace, I'm more likely to be thanking and praying to God the Creator. If I hurt someone, ignored the cries of help from a broken and crying world, I would probably turn to Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and ask for forgiveness and reconciliation. When I need help and when I need guidance and comfort, which is frequently, I always go to the Holy Spirit. But in all three situations, I go to God. In the reading from the Old Testament Proverbs in the Psalm, we are shown God the Creator who has acted in creation. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he writes of all the actions of the Trinity and in the five verses tells of God's action through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ and Paul says God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The theology of the Trinity reveals a God in relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are engaged in eternal communion. There was no beginning of this threesome. There was no, there will be no end. It has always been and always will be. And all have always been one. This relationship is shared with all Christians who have been baptized in the triune name. We are told when we are baptized, we are baptized in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, verifying that we are now in relationship, we are now in relationship with that triune God. The action of a triune God now belongs to a relationship that includes all of us. In the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, which are both ordained by Jesus Christ, are outward and visible signs that we are included in that relationship. We come in relationship when we gather around this table. And relationship means community. Community is at different in size, but all require relationship. Therefore, the relationship of love in the Trinity extends to us as community, as church, as Estevan, Canadians, and people who live in the world. Not just a few of us here in the parish, not just the Anglican church but the love that is a part of every human and all of creation. Now on the altar you'll notice that there's an icon there and um, you're most welcome to have a closer look at it and I hope that you, uh, that you would have a look at it and investigate icons just a little bit. Um, Brian and I were given the icon of the Holy Trinity by Father Jobin when we were on the Ile de Madeleine. And it's a copy of one done by Andre Rublev around 1410. There's so much symbolism in this icon. It tells us of the meaning of colors, representing the divinity, heavens and the earth, of the spirit touching the table, coming to earth, a mountain where humans have met God, a tree where three angelic visitors met Abraham and represent the cross that Jesus died on. And so many other things are there. But the main thing is that the three figures all look to one another, facing one another, and looking to the Eucharistic vessel on the table. You may remember other Sundays, when, Trinity Sundays, when I bring this icon along. And this icon is important to me, and it frequently acts as a focus for prayer for me, because it symbolically reminds me that I belong in this circle. I belong in this community with the Trinity and you belong in that circle as well every one of us this icon is an invitation and a reminder for all of us this icon affirms reaffirms that the Trinity is not just a doctrine but a mystery and it draws us beyond the surface appearances of the image to something deeper or higher or broader or maybe all three so on this Trinity Sunday I believe what we celebrate is the mystery of God whose vastness is beyond our comprehension, but who also reveals God's self to us in more ways than we can possibly grasp. In the Trinity, in the creative life force, we experience God the Father. In the teaching, healing, suffering, and hope, we live with God the Son who had human life. And in her ever-present guidance, we feel the call of the Holy Spirit who nudges, maybe pushes, coaches us. 
This mysterious God is ginormous, and yes, that is a word, I looked it up. Because this mysterious God is ginormous and more powerful than we can imagine, and that is a good thing. Because after all, who would want a puny God carved down to human scale? So blessed be the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, forever and ever, without end. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Let us confess our faith as we say in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please stand, sit, or kneel, as is your custom for the prayers of the people. The response to the bidding, holy, holy, holy God, is hear us and have mercy. Father, we give thanks for creation, for the beauty, wonder, and order of our universe. We give thanks that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We pray for the work of your church in conservation and preservation, that we may, that we may reflect your love for the world. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our clergy and churches, for Linda, our primate, Sidney Black, indigenous bishop, Greg, our metropolitan, Helen, our bishop, Mike, our dean, William, Wilma, our archdeacon, Barb, our deacon, Brian, our honorary assistant. For the clergy, lay leaders, congregation, and ministries of Last Mountain Parish, for St. George Imperial and Christ Church Nokomis. For the most reverend Gregory Kerr Wilson, Metropolitan, and the clergy and people of the ecclesiastical province of Rupert's Land. For Lutheran and Anglican global partners and companions. For the congregation of St. Paul's United Church for the Anglican Church of South America, for the Companion Diocese of Litchfield and Mayinga, for our ecumenical partners in the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, and Roman Catholic Covenant. We pray for teachers of the faith, preachers, and theologians. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear us and, and have, have mercy. mercy. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we give thanks for your love and redemption. We pray for the emergency services, for relief agencies, and for the staff of the Esteban RCMP, for all who risk their lives and give their lives to others. We pray for all who are seeking to bring healing and peace to our world, all who are working for unity and harmony. We pray for the people of Ukraine and the laying down of weapons. Holy, 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 holy God, hear, hear us and, and have, have mercy. mercy. Holy Spirit of God, we give thanks for the life you breathe into us, for the talents and abilities you give to us. We give you thanks and pray for our communities, our places of work, our homes, and our church families. For Tara Johns and her daughters, Alexa and Mackenzie. For Judy and Darwin Kroll and their daughters, Shalea and her family, and Tamira. We ask that you will guide us into ways of justice and peace. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear us, us and, and have, have mercy. mercy. We pray for all who do not know or love you, O God, for all who have not become aware of your mystery and wonder. We remember in your presence friends and loved ones in need, sickness or any other adversity, especially Lyle, Robert, Terry, Robert Adams, Kathy and Dwight Beard, Gail Brandon, Jody Bryant, Mackenzie Delaney, Aaron Ducart, Sharon Ducart, Frank Elberg, Nadine Nelson, Wanda Fries, Dorothy Gates, Dave Genter, Bob Haynes, Lori Haynes, Alan Hodges, Debbie Hubick, Brian Joseph, Pastor Janet Costina, B. Lukey, David McDonald, Michaela McPherson, Leanne McCarthy, Dorian McGillis, Marge Miller, Arnold Newton, Dale and Walter Purvis, Julie Ricks, Les Saxon, Kim Smith, Candy Smythe, Wanda Stang, Lisa Vandeveld, Tom Wright, Mavis Zinovich, and those we name silently before you now. Holy, holy, holy God, hear us and have mercy. We give thanks for the mystery of the Trinity and seek to enjoy the wonder of three persons in one God. 
We rejoice that you are our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, and as you have made us, you give us life eternal. We pray for all who have come closer to your threefold presence and your fellowship. We pray especially for Bill Winteringham, Tony Bashinsky, Florence Cuddington. Holy, holy, holy God, hear, hear us, us and, and have, have mercy. mercy. Father, in love you created us. Christ, by love you redeemed us. Spirit, through love you sustain us. We pray that by the power of your love that binds you as three in one, we may give ourselves in joy and love to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And peace, everybody. You know what? We're getting to the point now that if you choose to get up and approach people and they give you the hand at the peace, um, don't do that, but if the rest of you choose to move around, um, it's allowed, so. Peace, peace, peace. And our hymn is, offertory hymn is called call to Faith.
Let us pray. Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Eucharistic Prayer 3. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you send him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Christ, a father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now from the top of the page, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Breaking of the bread number two. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come on up. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And we go to page 214. That's, of course, if I can find That's twice in one day. Bottom of page 214, we say, All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Um, just a quick reminder to uh, think about, pray about, helping um, with Meals on Wheels. It's a good ministry. And um, if you would give some thought to that. Um, it's time to begin praying for our um, babies who will be baptized. I'm not sure about the date for baby Theo yet, but um, so we have little Theo Godfrey. You know his Nana and Papa are sitting at the back of the church there. And uh, baby, yeah, well, that's how you're known now is the, you know, Grandma and Grandpa, Nana, Papa. Mima. Okay. You know what? It's all about relationship and um, whatever you get called. So anyway, um, so we have baby Theo and Grace will be baptized on the 17th of July. So um, it would be lovely if you were all here to welcome her and her family into, into this church as well. Um, I for those of, there's no, it's not a lot of people in pews today. I suspect that they're tired from um, picking up garbage and helping out um, this whole weekend. Um, there's been a lot of labor done and um, volunteerism for, on behalf of St. Giles. So we give thanks for that also. Music this morning was from our new hymn book. Um, and while it feels new, the, the, hymn, the hymns, the uh, tunes feel familiar and um, so far I'm liking it and uh, we will continue to use and explore so all right our final hymn then is oh it's a new tune Heather will uh, no not Heather mm -mm. Uh, Margaret will play it through once so you can sort of familiarize, play it through once, and then we'll sing it once. Please rise. Thank you. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.